Hey, welcome back to the Groundbreaker International YouTube channel. It's good to be back with you here once again. On this video, I want to share with you about the upcoming Hebrew calendar year 5782. This will be the first video, full video, on the Hebrew calendar year 5782 for this channel. And today, I believe that the Lord has given me some insight to bring to you the mysteries, the deep mysteries that are getting ready to occur here in this prophetic time period on God's calendar. Now, we are still in the decade of the pay. That is the decade of the mouth to speak things out, to speak things that are not as though they are. We are getting ready to come out in, uh, at the filming of this video at this time period. Uh, here in just a few months, we are coming out of the year of the Olive, 5781, into the year of the bait. So we're about to go into the pay bait year. Let's look at the bait. And the bait is the number two. It's the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet. We're coming into the 82nd year, 5782. And so it's going to be the year of the mouth. And last year was the Aleph. It was God teaching our mouths. Now we're coming into a place of the bait. The bait is a picture of a tent. And it means, uh, it has a few different connotations and meanings, but one and one of the greatest is a dwelling place or a house because a tent is a covering. It's a place of habitation. It's a place to come in and dwell. Think of it as your home. When you go home, you're comfortable. When you go home, uh, hopefully you're comfortable. You uh, feel safe. It's a place that you can feel relaxed and it is your sanctuary. All right, the tent is a place of sanctuary. Well, let's look at the bait, though, a little bit deeper here. Bait is another starting point. Bait has the connotation of like a new starting point because it's the first letter in Torah. It's the first letter in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. Uh, the, and what the Bible says, in the beginning, it starts with the letter bait, which is the word barashit, or in the beginning. And so, being that it's the first letter, and the Aleph is not the first letter of the Bible, it's the bait, it's the second letter, it's as though the bait is like a new beginning. It's another starting point. So the first thing that the Lord showed me was, is that this upcoming year is going to be the starting point for a lot of people, and it's going to be the starting point, a new starting point for the church. I want you to get that in your spirit right now because of what I'm about to tell you. You're not going to want to miss this. The bait or the picture of the tent is made up of three vavs. Now, the vav is the number six in Hebrew gematria. It's the sixth letter, and it makes up the number 18. If you add up all three of those sixes, it's the number 18. Now, I know a lot of you go, oh, it's 666, right? No, no, no. That number that you're referring to is 666. This is not adding up to 666. Six plus six plus six adds up to the number 18. So just throwing that out there, I know a lot of people freak out when they see three sixes together, but that is not the connotation of what we're seeing in the letter bait here. The three vavs that add up to 18 also spell the word chai, which is the letter for life or to revive something, to bring to life. Here's what the Lord is showing me. If I were to theme this year, here it is right, right now. This is what God is showing me. I know there's a lot more to it. But I believe what we're getting ready to see is the year of habitation. I believe that we're getting ready to see God bringing new life into the body of Christ. Because the church, let's face it, has been dying a slow death for a long time. And all through the pandemic and all through the past year in 2020, and beyond, uh, we've seen a transformation within the body of Christ. All of a sudden, a little bit of persecution, a little bit of pressure starts bringing out the truth of who the true church is and who the false church is. I've been preaching on this for a while, but I believe that through that pressure, we're beginning to see uh, the church, the true church, beginning to get a backbone. I believe that we're finally seeing some pastors rising up and saying enough is enough. We're not going to lay down and be a doormat for Satan and his kingdom. We're not going to be a doormat 
uh, for the political system. We are going to rise up and we are going to be who God has called us to be. That is the true church of Jesus Christ. God, during this time period, 5782, is bringing new life and a new beginning into the church. I believe that. And I believe that it's going to be a time period, a year of habitation a year of dwelling, just as a tent is a place of dwelling. And the three vobs within that, representing life, God is reviving, bringing new life into the place of habitation because there's life in the habitation of God's presence. God is wanting to manifest himself in his house once again. Look, houses of worship need to become places of glory once again. I'm going to pull no punches in this video today. We have allowed the spirit of lethargy to bind up the church for so long that we, we have totally obliterated the uh, manifest presence of God, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our churches. And not just within the meetings that happens within the entire church, the people of the church themselves, and what happens is, is it's choked the life out of us. It's choked the life out of the body of Christ. But I believe that we're seeing new life coming in and that just doing church is not going to uh, pacify people any longer. We want to see something real. We want to see the manifest presence of God back in the church house, back in the habitation of God's presence. All right, let's move on here. Um, the bait also means in. It has the connotation of inward or coming into something. God wants back in his church. God wants to dwell once again within the tabernacle, within the tent of meeting. We are the living, breathing tabernacle of God. But yet we've pushed the presence of God out for so long within our lives and corporately that our spirits have died out, many of us within the church, and many people have backslidden. And so I believe that God wants back in his dwelling place. This is the year of God coming back in, breathing life back into the church and bringing new, fresh life. Now, Jesus quoted Isaiah 56, 7. You're going to enjoy this. When he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves. This was obviously whenever he kicked over the money changers table uh, within, the, uh, within the synagogue. And Jesus quoted Isaiah 56, 7. He said, my house shall be a house of prayer. Isaiah uses the word be'ith here for house twice in this passage of scripture. Now, be'ith is the word bait spelled out. The word bait spelled out is made up of three letters. The bait, it begins with bait. It's also the yod and the tav. So you have bait, yod, tav. And it comes from the root word bana, meaning to build up or to construct or establish. And so we have bait here, which is the word bait, which is the Hebrew calendar year we're coming into, 5782. The two is the bait. And it means as the root meaning of constructing something or establishing something, building something up, something that's not there, building it or rebuilding it. All right, that's very important to what I'm about to tell you. The bait, the yod, and the tav is how you spell this. You have the bait, which is a tent or a dwelling place. You have the letter yod here, which is the hand of God, and it also means transition. And so you have the bait or dwelling place, then you have the hand of God transitioning something or moving something. And then you have the tab. The, the tab has an interesting, uh, several interesting connotations and meanings, but the tab is the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And it shows us the final dwelling place. Uh, the tab is all about new life, new beginnings, the fullness of God doing something within the earth because it's the number 400 times 100. or So four is the number of earth, 400, and I'll get into that in a moment, is God perfecting something within the earth. 
This, when we talk about the new heavens and the new earth, the new Jerusalem, we're talking about the Tav, God completing something, bringing uh, something that was old back to life in a way that's even better again. He, God always makes things better. He doesn't just bring things back to life for the sake of bringing it back to life, but He makes things greater than they were before. And so the Tav is that fullness of God completing something, a new creation. Now, the bait, going back to the bait for just a moment, not only does it mean uh, a tent, a dwelling, or a dwelling place, but it also means creation. The first letter in the word to create is the letter bait, and it's the word bara, which means to create. So you have creation within the habitation. Within the habitation, we have creation. We need to understand that. So let's put these three letters together. This gives us a breakdown picture of what we are about to see. We have the bait, dwelling place. We have the hand of God transitioning, and then we have the Tav, new creation. God is transitioning us to new habitations and new creations. He's taking our lives, He's taking what's been battered and beat down, and He's transitioning us into a new place, a new fresh beginning, and to, into new territories and new creations. I believe not only for us as individuals, but for the church corporately as a whole as well, that God is transitioning us out of a season of, of old into a season of new. I know that sounds cliche, but I'm just deconstructing the letters for you to show you how all of this uh, plays out in the Word of God. So I believe that God is focusing at this point in time on reestablishing His house, the church, as a place known for the habitation of His presence. I believe that God is wanting to build houses of habitation, dwelling places, churches that are powerful, and, and that they dwell within the manifest presence of God, and they have a full expression of the fivefold ministry a correct expression of the fivefold ministry. I believe that God is wanting to bring us back to the New Testament in an even greater, more powerful way and to bring us into a realm of new creation of the church. And that might frighten some people. I'm not trying to frighten you or, or try to sound way out there. What I'm saying is, is that God is wanting to revive the church that's been dead and dying and drying out, and He's wanting to revive it into a new creation into something even greater than we were before. But it's only going to come through and by the presence of God and Him doing things within our lives. We have to be presence dwellers. We have to be the habitation dwellers. We have to let God inhabit us as individuals 24-7. It has to be a 24-7 relationship with God in the presence of God. Moses said, to the Lord. He said, God, I want to see your face. I know we spend time together, but I want the fullness. I want to see it all. And God allowed him to see what he could see, which was the backside. This is a, as full as you can get, Moses, until, uh, until your time has come, because you cannot stand in my presence. Your body cannot stand in my presence with seeing the fullness of my face. But that should be the cry of our hearts. God, we want to see the fullness of you and not just be a cliche, but to actually spend time dwelling in the presence of God, letting him soak in us and dwell his spirit among us. That is what God is wanting to establish within us. And it's going to translate into the church as a whole. And I believe that God is wanting to establish houses of habitation but He's going to have to bring us into a place of new creation. Many times we have to be crushed before that he, the potter can reestablish and recreate something even greater than we were before. And so right now, I believe through all of the shutdowns, all of the lockdowns, all of the political things that have happened, even all of the, uh, all of the prophets and so-called prophets that tried to prophesy one thing and it did not happen the way that they thought it was supposed to. I believe that God was teaching our mouths in the year of the pay olive. And I believe that now God in this pay bait year that is coming, God is now reconstructing. He led us, uh, he led the church 
understand that we cannot do anything within and of ourselves. It's not about superstar prophets. It's not about superstar preachers. It's about the presence of God and being fully dependent upon Him in every walk of life. Are we starting to get the picture here, church? All right, let's talk a little bit more here. The bait spelled out. Bait Yod. Uh, Beit Yod Tov is the number 412. Like I said, four is the number of earth. Multiplied by 100, you have 400, is uh, God doing something within the earth, perfecting it. And then you have the number of 12, which was divine governmental order. So here's what the Lord is speaking to me. God is bringing creation into divine governmental order. God is taking the earth. God is perfecting things uh, even more so on the earth, God is lining things up. Of course, He's getting ready uh, to move, I believe, very powerfully, but He's moving things into divine governmental order. The church has to line up into divine governmental order. When you see the number 12, think of fivefold ministry. It's the fivefold ministry coming into alignment with the will of God, into true alignment with what the Bible teaches us. It's not uh, all of this, this. Uh, crazy stuff that people teach. It's true uh, fivefold ministry, the expressions of fivefold ministry uh, within the church lining up. So we have God doing something perfected within the church, within uh, the body of Christ in divine governmental order and bringing things into alignment. God is bringing things into alignment this year. 5782, God's bringing things into alignment in His house, in His dwelling place. Isn't that awesome news today? The earth is lining up. The house of God is lining up. The governments are lining up. God is establishing a new creation in His house. Praise God. I am excited for this upcoming year because I'm seeing that, that, that all of the things that have happened, God has allowed us to be crushed, uh, allows us to be pressed, but not crushed. God has allowed the pressing, but we're not destroyed we are coming out of this as new creations, and God is going to establish something new, something fresh within His church for the end-time move of God. I truly believe that. Now, let's talk about the paid decade and how this combines with the bait. So we've been talking about the pay, which is the letter of uh, the mouth, and it's the number 80. So we have the 80, pay, and the bait, too. We have the pay, which means to speak things that are not as though they are. God has been teaching our mouths. He's been teaching us how to be obedient. He's been teaching us what to say, when to say it, what not to say, when to be quiet. And now, as the church is beginning to learn that we have to have dependence upon God, we have to have accuracy in our prophetic words, we have to have accuracy in being obedient with what God tells us to do. Now we're coming into a time of habitation, into a time where God is establishing His house. God showed me in Ezra chapter 6, verses 7 through 8, something that I found very significant. Now this is the time uh, King Darius I is speaking here. Ezra is talking about King Darius' decree here of rebuilding the house of God. And it says in verse 7, through eight, let the work of this house, this is King Darius speaking, let the work of this house of God alone. In other words, leave it alone. Let them rebuild the house of God. Let the Jews rebuild the house of God. This is under the Persian Empire. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house. Somebody say, build this baith, this bait, this house. Let the uh, Jews build this house of God on its site. Moreover, I issue a decree, a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of these Jews, for the building of this house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expense from taxes on the region beyond the river. This is to be given immediately to these men so that they are not hindered. I have a question for you. How do you make a decree? This is what the Lord spoke to me. How do you make a decree? With your mouth. You decree, you declare something with your mouth. Now, this is very interesting here, some of the parallels of the prophetic time period that we're in, in uh, Ezra, chapter, uh, Ezra chapter 6 here, and the time period that we're in, in 2021, 22, and 5, 7, 
8.2. Why is that? Because Ezra speaks of a time when King Darius, uh, of the, the Persian Empire declares what King Darius, uh, rather King Cyrus decreed in his first year as king because Cyrus decreed that the house of God re be rebuilt first. He was the first one that started the process of rebuilding the house of God. Now watch this. President Trump here in the United States was called, even the Hebrews, the Jews in Israel, called him a type of King Cyrus. He was a Cyrus. He was a friend to the Jews. He was a friend to the Christian people. Whether you liked him or not, prophetically, you have to look at him as that. Was he perfect? No, but neither was Cyrus. He was an imperfect vessel that God used to help to perfect things. And so we see here that President Trump was one that during that era that God began the process of reconstructing the house of God into the image in which God wanted us to be rebuilt in. Because all of these things of the past, all of the seeker-sensitive church, all of the hyper-grace movement, all of these things had to be deconstructed, had to be torn down, and the true house of God needs to be rebuilt. And so during that time period, I believe was the beginning of the uh, renewal of the rebuilding of the house of God in this era. So we are now in the time period of God rebuilding and reestablishing his house. So looking at the parallels here, that President Trump during that time period may have been the one to begin it, but now it's our time to begin to pick that mantle up and to continue on in rebuilding and reestablishing. I felt the Holy Spirit on that. I hope you did. Reestablishing the house of God in the image that God wants it to be reestablished. How? Look at the pattern that God gave us in the New Testament. Look at the pattern of the New Testament. We need to go back to the patterns of the New Testament and let God show us how to rebuild the house of habitation. God is wanting to rebuild his house. We're in that time period where Cyrus, during that time period of the Cyrus, that he allowed the house of God to be rebuilt. Things during that Trump era, during that time period, things were established and decreed. Uh, even in Israel, the embassy of America in Israel was reestablished in J Jerusalem. Just things like that. The house of God became, once again, at the forefront of this nation in America. And now we're seeing the time period of, of even uh, harsh and corrupt leaders, even through that, push all of that aside right now and look at what God is doing. God is energizing the church right now to become active, to become active not just in doing things, but doing things in the presence of God. I look at, at revival meetings breaking out in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of, of parks and stadiums and, and places that are not just inside the four walls of the church building. I'm seeing hope for the church. But I wish and I pray that if you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, you'll understand this is not going to be for everyone that calls themselves the church. This reestablishment, realignment, some of you, uh, I guarantee you, some of you have already turned the video off. You're not even watching this right now. You might have started this video, but many people have already turned it off because they don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear that God is getting ready to revive and do something new, and it has nothing to do with the methods of church growth, has nothing to do with all of the programs and all the things uh, uh, you know, that we thought that we had to do in the past to have a good church. God doesn't care about good church any longer. He is concerned with the heart of the church and us being the church, being the hands and feet of Jesus. And you cannot do that with a program, folks. You can't do it with a method, with a church growth model. It only comes by dwelling within the house of God, within the presence of God, letting the manifest presence of God touch you and change your life today. God wants us to decree today with our mouths that the house of God will be rebuilt, that it become a house, a baith of prayer and not a den of thieves. God wants to reestablish, to banah, 
to construct, to establish prayer and presence back within the house of God right now. If you don't get anything else out of this video, that right there is vitally important. God is wanting to reestablish the importance of sold out prayer. And this is not, Lord, thank you for this food. God bless everybody. Amen. Prayer. I'm talking about warfare, intercessory prayer within the church that he's wanting to reestablish. And he's wanting to establish, reestablish the importance and focus on his presence dwelling within the church, within us. If we can get that today, I believe that we are about to see the miracles, signs, and wonders. We're about to see those things. The first two letters that I, I just come to mind right now in that word bana to establish, the first two letters is the bait and the noon. The bait, the house, and the noon, which is signs, miracles, and wonders. It's the number 50. In order for the house to see those signs, miracles, and wonders, we must have God breathe on us and for us to dwell in the presence of God today. The pay bait year is coming. The pay to speak things that are not as though they are. The bait, the house, the dwelling place. Let me tell you one more thing. Within the pay, some of you have heard me talk about this before. Within the letter pay, the mouth, there is a hidden letter on the inside of that pay, it is the letter bait. It is the tent, the dwelling place, because on the inside of our mouths, we have the power to create. We have the power to speak things that are not as though they are, and we have the power to speak into the atmosphere. We have the power to decree a new habitation and a new creation, because I'm believing, and if you'll believe with me, I believe that we are going to see the church reestablished if we decree with our mouths and speak that this is a new beginning. This is a new time period for the people of God before Christ returns. We are going to see a great move of God, and it's only going to be through the power and the presence of Jesus Christ moving within us and within the church body as a whole. But we have to declare it with our mouths. This is what we need to be declaring in this pay bait year that God, His presence will be reestablished and His house will become a house, a bait of prayer once again. Can you believe that for me and with me today as we move through? And I believe that there are going to be more videos to come. As always, I enjoy bringing these prophetic time period videos to you. I know this one was a little bit longer today, but this is the, the first major video that I wanted to release on the pay bait year that is coming up. There'll be more to come, so stay tuned. As always, God bless you. God bless your family. We'll see you real soon. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that notification bell so you can receive updates for when new content arrives. Also, be sure to visit our website at gbreaker.org. From there, you can learn more about Groundbreaker International, and if the Lord leads you to do so, you can sow a financial seed of blessing. Now, I would like to invite you to check out one of these other videos from Groundbreaker International's YouTube channel. Until next time, God bless.